Hello and welcome to this iSystem video. Today, we will learn about the concept of tracing, its benefits, and basic steps in the tracing process. So, what exactly is tracing? First of all, tracing is a debug technique that gives you full and non-intrusive insight into the execution of your application. Trace enables you to find bugs and timing issues, measure and analyze performance, and identify non-tested code by coverage measurement. All of this is based on trace data recordings. So what is a trace data recording? It's a list of events ordered by timestamps. It offers a complete trace of the program execution all without affecting real-time behavior. Each event gets a timestamp and is put into a list of events that you can easily analyze. But what are events? Anything going on inside of your application. For example, an event can be a code call, jump, return, branch, memory read and write, DMA started or finished, RTE communication started or finished, CAN message sent or received, to name just a few. These events can be categorized into multiple groups. The first group represents program trace, the second group represents data trace, and the third group represents peripheral trace. There are two different approaches to acquiring a trace recording software and hardware. It is also possible to combine these two concepts, and that's what we call hybrid tracing. Software tracing does not require any special hardware, but the number of traced objects is limited, and so is the trace duration. It also creates significant overhead and load on application interfaces. Hardware tracing, as the name suggests, requires dedicated hardware. It offers a high number of trace objects, long trace duration, produces no overhead, and supports advanced use cases. For today, let's focus on this concept. To do hardware tracing, we need an embedded target with a microcontroller, an iSystem blue box, and WinIdea running on a host computer. With hardware trace, you can record all sorts of information generated by the CPU, such as program trace, data trace, and peripheral trace, as mentioned before. Generated trace messages are read and buffered by the debugger. Messages get assigned a timestamp. Depending on the microcontroller, that happens either on the microcontroller itself or externally on the blue box at capture time. Recorded data is then sent to the host PC, where trace messages get decompressed, reconstructed, and ready for profiling. So how do we actually get the trace data off of the chip? That depends on the hardware. Let's take a look at two general techniques. In the first case, the microcontroller buffers the trace messages in a dedicated trace buffer that's on the chip. It's usually called OCTB, or on-chip trace buffer. The trace messages are temporarily stored in this buffer, and the debugger reads out this data through the debug interface. Then the data continues its way into the PC and win idea. In the second case, the data is transmitted off-chip through a dedicated trace port. That's either a serial or parallel interface. Here, the trace logic directly streams the data to the CPU trace port. The blue box captures these messages and buffers them in its own large internal buffer. After that, they continue their way to the host PC. If your particular microcontroller doesn't provide trace, don't worry. If a superset device that features trace exists for your microcontroller, we offer a special solution we call an emulation adapter. It works like this. The original microcontroller on the target circuit board is replaced with a soldering unit. 
A conversion board is connected on top of the soldering unit, and the emulation adapter is then plugged on top. The emulation adapter that uses the superset device emulates the original microcontroller while also exposing the trace interface to the debugger. You just connect it to the blue box, and you're ready for tracing! Now, what does raw trace output look like in WinIdea? It shows you trace sample numbers, associated addresses, raw data, the decoded data in a readable form, and the corresponding timestamp information for each trace item. When traced events are uploaded and displayed, it's time to present this data in a more readable way, in the WinIdea Profiler Timeline. This presentation method is called profiling, and here is what the timeline looks like. Now, how to manage and read the gathered data? Find out in the next iSystem tutorial. Thank you for watching and see you then!